There we have our animation as images or frames. We need to turn our frames into video. First, I've opened up a brand new Blender file. Then I'm going to drag out the side here and I'm going to come to my render settings. We can leave all these settings as default since a lot of these won't affect our sequencing, which is turning the rendered frames into a video. Then in output, my resolution, I'm just going to keep at the same width and height as my rendered frames. So for me, that was 1920 by 1080. But for example, if you were rendering a horizontal phone style animation, this might be 1080 by 1920 for you. Then frame rate, we had it set to 30 frames per second, which means for every 30 images, one second will pass in our video. I'll keep my frame star and end at 250, but then remember, we actually rendered two animations. So in this case, we'll actually need to change it from 250 to 500 if you want to keep it as one long animation. Otherwise, you can keep it at 250 and render these one at a time. Then for the output, this will decide where our video will be saved. So I'm going to left click this button here to open a, a folder, and I'm just going to press this plus button to create a new folder in the location I want and I'm just going to call this animation video. I'll then double click it and then press accept. Then we still got it set on PNG and that's just going to create a bunch of new PNGs which is kind of useless for us since we already have them. So we're going to change this from PNG to FFmpeg video. I'll keep it on RGB and I'm going to come down to encoding. Here it's on Matroska by default but we want to change this to MPEG4 which is pretty much MP4. For quality I'm going to change it from medium quality to high quality. Encoding speed we can leave at the default and video codec I like to keep this at H.264 which is also the default. Audio settings we can leave alone since we have no audio in our animation but you can always add some music on top of it or something like that using some free video editing software such as DaVinci Resolve which is what I use to edit my videos. Now all that's set up we can can go ahead and import our frames. So first we're going to change from 3D viewport here to video sequencer. This is pretty much like a mini video editor inside a blender. Then if I press this add here we can choose image sequence and that allows us to add a bunch of images into our blender file which can then be rendered with the sequencer. So I'll choose image sequence. I'm going to find my frames which are in here. Keep in mind mine are in a different location from yours since I rendered my animation before I even taught the course. I'll double click this and I'm going to left click the top frame here, scroll down all the way to the bottom and shift left click the bottom one. You can just press A to select all, but I find that this is less likely to cause any bugs. Then I'll set my end frame here to 250, since these are 250 frames, and I can just choose add image strip. Now you can see we have our image strip inside of our sequencer. I'm also going to change from shader editor here to timeline, and I'm going to move all the way up to frame 250, and I'll just go one frame from 250, since technically we're going to be adding from frame 251. Then I'll press add again, and I'm going to choose image sequence, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to choose my hexagon frames, which are just in here. And I'm going to choose my end frame as 500 this time. Then I can left click my first frame here and shift left click our last one. Perfect. Then I can press add image strip. Now you can see we've got these back to back. Now since we've got everything else set up, you can press control S to save just in case things crash and you can save that somewhere on your computer. Then I'll go ahead and press render animation by left clicking render, then render animation. You can see how it goes through frames much quicker because it's not actually having to calculate what these frames look like, rather it's just taking these images and then turning them into a video, which is much faster. Great, now it's finished, you can see there's no more rendering going on here and we can go ahead and open up the video file to see how things are looking. Now you can see I've opened up the video file here and we've got a working animation. There is an mp4 file. And yeah, with that, I'd like to thank you so much for following along with this course. Or even if you're just stopping by for the single tutorial, I still appreciate it. So thank you. We also got our first Patreon during this course. So a big thank you to Kyle for becoming our first Patreon. With that though, I'd like to thank you again for tuning into the course. And I look forward to seeing you for future courses and tutorials. Also, if you enjoy my teaching style, I also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching, complete with personalized lessons and post-lesson quiz questions and support. Link in the description if you're interested. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. You can also support the channel by making a one-time donation through Super, but even just liking, subscribing and sharing if you enjoyed is more than enough to support the channel. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.